Okay, so welcome to another video of me in the Rubicon. So you've heard us talk a lot about wiring the switches um, for the, the spotlights, which we obviously put on the front. There was a big conversation about where do we put them, both joined up together, two on the front, two on the sides. So we got some really, really, really nice brackets from uh, Go Rhino, came in from America to go on the front, and then we put the two a little bit further back. So. Well, it's all great having somewhere to put them, but what do they actually look like? Well, one, we've got to be super careful because if we put these things on whilst we're driving down the road, chances are we're going to blind someone. So we best not do that. So what we're actually going to do is we've just got a nice little uh, path that we're going to take now and show you what these lights look like when we're actually going to use them in vain. Now, tonight, as it happens, is quite a foggy night, so there could be a lot of reflection off them which would be a great opportunity to actually put them in the place you actually want to see them. And you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. So, when we put the lights on, what we decided to do was wire them into the switches, which are uh, just over here. Wire them into these switches. Now, these switches come as standard with the Rubicon. And uh, I believe there's an option, if you get like a Sahara or something like that, doesn't have the uh, additional locking diffs and indeed, uh, those switches i believe those actual switches are about 350 400 pound and they put the loom in for you the wiring loom etc which is again another thing i very much like about this car is the fact that once you buy it they actually leave you options so you can actually further modify it a little bit later on um because they know there's a lot of aftermarket requirements for, for modifying these things uh, which is one of the reasons we love it don't we so mm -hmm. what we did is we, these four switches, number three here and number four, are 14 amp switches. Whereas number one and number 20, are, uh, number two apologies, mm -hmm. are actually um, 40 amp switches. So if you've got something that's gonna have a lot more pull uh, or more power requirement, like that, that's where you'd wanna put them. So I probably could have put all four switches or four lights into one switch so maybe auxiliary three or maybe auxiliary four but when i bought these lights it didn't actually tell me what the amp was per light so i don't think it's much but i ain't no electrician so i'm like i'm gonna put the two on one switch and the other two on the other switch i can always change it around after as again it's a very simple process and i'll drop a, another video about how we did that a little bit later on so why would you have these switches so if you just look over here this vehicle comes with the automatic high beams, which back in England is known as full beams, but we'll call them high beams. So now the car will realize there's nothing coming and automatically switches to high beam in a minute. So if we just have a look out here, I think we've picked up a street light there, so we're wondering whether or not that's actually gonna be any good. Probably not. The reason I'm showing you this is because back in the UK, um, we would obviously want our high beams on, and of course anywhere else we buy this vehicle, you're gonna want your high beams on as you do when it gets dark and there isn't any oncoming traffic. Now, if you're coming down a path like this in the middle of the night and you're doing a bit of off-roading and you really wanna get the full kind of uh, size of the road and the path, this is when you use your light switches. So, here we go, auxiliary number three, and auxiliary number four. So they say it is foggy tonight, I have got the fog beams on as well, but in actual fact, that throws out a lot of light. And as I say, what I was referring to earlier is this would be quite a good way to actually line up your lights to where you want them. I decided to put the top two quite up high and then the two bottom ones on the nose there with the Go Rhino brackets a bit lower. That way, what at least it would allow us to do is to have the option to see distance or indeed uh, on a further perspective. So if we let the up on just on the front, and you see what you think of that. Those are just the front Go Rhino ones, or Go Rhino brackets. But actually, because it's foggy, we are getting a lot of that feedback. Feedback or reflection from the, from the cloud or what have you. But if you put those on as well, it gives a real nice show of the road. Have a look at that. So yeah, down your narrow tracks, this would be ideal, again, if it wasn't so foggy, but 
you do really get a sense of how bright these things are, which is what's really quite nice. Now, it's like on the inside, and if you just look down here, what's quite nice as well is you've got these auxiliary three and four showing that they're obviously on or off. And a real nice touch here as well is if you go in here, what you can do is if you go to settings, and you can also go here, auxiliary switches, and you can actually tell if you want them to stay on, remember the last setting, uh, whether we want them to be on ignition or just battery. So if I turn the engine off now, I've got mine on battery, they would still continue to work. And if you want to remember its last state. So if we always wanted them on, we turned the engine off, that would stay on if I put momentary, um, uh, sorry, if I press recall last state, sorry, it would uh, remember the last position it was in. But if it was latch or momentary, that's if you want to run constantly or if you want it to turn off uh, after a short while. So that said, let's go and have a look at what these things look like outside, shall we? Okay, so here we are. We've got the lights, obviously they're all mounted. We know all about that. Um, what do they actually look like on the outside? Uh, in vain, we're out here in the dark, uh, up a path. And um, yeah, it'd be rather nice to see. So uh, here we go. Now that looks fantastic. And it's probably getting a bit of glare there, I would imagine. But if you have a look at that, that is what they look like outside. To get a real sense of how bright they can be. And so what I, I think could be quite good here is because you can see the way the beam is actually going, we could, if we'd bought the right toolage with us, which we didn't, um, we could actually just move those around just so we get a better feel for, for where they go. But I actually think they look great. And um, yeah, for this kind of thing, you'd want to do that a lot more, wouldn't you? <laughs> so there we are that's us give us a like give us a subscribe uh we're going to keep these videos coming about all sorts of different things um and again my next video what i'll probably do is i'll show you how i wired them in and exactly how easy it was to do um either way give us a like and subscribe we've got ben and his son uh everybody needs a son on a job like this and uh thanks for watching <laughs>